Hey everyone, I'm going to do a bit of a guest appearance today to talk about the Java file and stream libraries. So we're going to learn about files, about input streams and output streams, about uh, buffered readers. So if you've seen those and you've wondered what they are, we're going to learn. So let's start off with some basics. So I'm going to say file file equals new file. We're going to point it to a bit of text called hello.txt and then uh, print it out. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check if we've actually created this file yet. So we're going to say, does it exist? Now, that might strike you as a little bit odd. So why do we have this thing called file.exists? One thing to keep in mind is that the Java file class doesn't actually represent a file, it represents a path. Uh, that's confusing and kind of terrible, but uh, if you remember it, then it will make sense. And everything will be fine. So that brings us to this next thing, which is really pretty wild. We're, we're going to go ahead and say file.isDirectory. Uh, so, you know, why does file have a method called isDirectory? Uh, if you remember that it's actually a path, it makes a lot more sense. And so to be super clear about that, because I think this will save people some time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it that. Path that exists, path that is directory, that makes a whole lot more sense to read than file that is directory. Uh, so let's move on. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually write some data to this file, and we're going to read it back. So to do that, we're going to need to learn about streams. A stream is a pipe, basically, that either bytes go into. Uh, so in the case of what's called an output stream, you can you know, output a bunch of bytes and push them into the stream. Uh, there's the opposite, which is called an input stream, uh, where, which is a pipe where you can read bytes. So you can say, please give me the next byte, and then the one after that, and so on. Uh, you might wonder, you know, why do we do it, why do we do it the complicated way, right? Uh, why doesn't the Java file API just give you, you know, a method called write file, where you pass it a string, and it writes it to a certain location? Um, the reason for that is that files can be big. And it's a lot nicer to say, you know, instead of saying, hey, I'm going to make a string that has, say, you know, if the file is a gigabyte, it has a billion characters in it, and then I'm going to write it to a file. Instead, I'm going to create a stream and, you know, write it out one character at a time. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and make an output stream. And specifically, we're going to have to create something called a file output stream. Path. There we go. And you might be wondering now, you know, what other type of output stream is there? We will get to that. Uh, streams are actually very flexible and quite cool. And they're used for files, but they're not only used for files, they're used for other things as well. All right, so now I've got an unhandled exception. And so, uh, we're going to leave exception handling for another day. What we're going to do for now is a bit of a cop out, and we're going to say throws IO exception. Boom. So that's going to keep things a little cleaner. We don't have to do a bunch of trying and catching. Uh, so let's see what we've got. So, as I said, it's literally just a pipe. You can write an array of bytes, you can write a single byte. That's pretty much all that you can do. Uh, so let's do it. Let's say contents equals hello world. All right. So you might notice we can't do that, but we can say dot. get bytes and outstream.close. Boom, we've just created a file. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, I've got to import that guy. Cool. All right, now let's run it. So what we're actually going to do first is take a quick look at the uh, 
directory that we're in for this, this project. You can see there's nothing here. Uh, let's put that away. We'll say debug. Uh, so we've got our file. Uh, does it exist? False. So we don't ha didn't have it yet, but then we're going to go ahead and create it. Uh, if I put this back, you can see we've got hello.txt now. And bam, we just created a file from Java. So now let's go and read one. And in fact, we can go ahead and read the same one. So I'll delete that. Comment out all of this business about writing the file. Uh, because remember, the file's still there. It's not going to go away. And we're going to read it. So to do that, we're going to use something called uh, a buffered reader. Uh, the reason that you use readers and buffered readers and whatnot is because a stream is a little bit limited. A stream, uh, so in this case, it would be an input stream if we, we uh, open the, the file. Remember, we had an output stream for writing the file. We're going to have an input stream for reading the file. It still only lets you read you know, one byte at a time. But really, I'd like to just you know, read an entire line and get back a string. And buffered reader is really nice. It lets you do that. So let's do it. Buffered reader reader equals new buffered reader. And now we're going to have to do something a little bit convoluted. So sorry about that. New file input. New file input stream. File. So that's just Java being that awesome. Uh, let's import a couple things. That's correct. We call it path because we're cool like that. All right, here we go. Uh, and so now we're going to say reader dot read line bam and that's actually all the code that we need to open a file read a line from it and print it out uh, if you're interested in the uh, distinction, for example, between an input stream and an input stream reader, it's a little bit arcane, uh, so I'm not going to go into it. I would recommend just checking out the docs on uh, the internet. But if you want to make a buffered reader, you can use code that looks just like this and just get it done. So we're reading a line, and let's try it. Boom, so we got a file. This time, when I ask, does it exist, it's going to print out true. Because remember, last time we ran this program, we created it. Uh, is it a directory? Nope. Uh, and then we're going to read a line from it, and we read exactly what we wrote last time. And life is good. And so the last thing that I want to do, uh, we've talked about files, we've talked about streams, we've talked about reading and writing files. I want to talk about some additional cool stuff that you can do with streams. So let's comment out this guy. And let's do something really serious. Um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to open uh, a URL from the internet. And we're going to get back an input stream, which remember is just a pipe that you can pull bytes out of. And we're just going to read that entire, an entire like huge file, actually, from the internet, you know, one byte at a time, just pulling it down. Java makes that really easy for you. Let's do it. I can say URL, URL equals new URL. And what I'm actually going to use is from Project Gutenberg, the entire text of Shakespeare's Hamlet. So there it is. If you want to try that URL, incidentally, you can just paste this into your browser and see exactly what file it is that we're loading. And you can see that URL has something called URL at open stream. Boom input stream, stream equals URL at open stream. And let's go ahead and import this guy. Uh, quick side note, if you ever see, uh, if you're ever using the Eclipse, you know, import helper and you see, you know, cobra.portable or anything like that, that's some really terrible stuff that you should never use. So make sure you, you use java.io. There we go. Uh, word of warning. Anyway. Let's go ahead and read this guy. So we're going to make another buffered reader. New buffered reader. 
but instead of having a reader that reads from a file, we've got a reader that's going to read from the internet, and let's just do it. So new input stream reader, stream. So you might notice this is really similar to what we did above, but instead of using a file input stream, we're using the stream that we got from a URL. Uh, and let's just do it. So we're going to say um, string line equals reader dot read line. So that's going to get us the first line. And you might be wondering, if I'm reading you know, line after line from a big file, how do I actually know when I'm done? So buffered reader makes it really easy. Uh, eventually, what will happen is we get to the end of the file, and reader.readline will return null. So all I've got to do is I've got to say while line not equal to null. So, you know, did we do we have a line? If so, we're going to do something. For now, we're going to do something very simple. We're just going to print it. Print it to our console. We're reading it from the internet printing it to our console. And then, of course, I'm going to read the next line, line equals reader.readline. And eventually, line's going to be null, and we're going to quit. So we're going to say system.out.println, done reading. Boom. All right, so I've put the correct URL in now, and uh, let's try it again. All right, boom. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, what you can see now is we downloaded from the internet and printed out the entire script of this famous play. So to conclude, streams are cool. The file object in Java is actually a path. So you can use uh, output streams to write to files. You can use input streams to read from files. And you can use streams for a lot of other cool things in addition. And in our next tutorial, we'll talk a little bit about how to use the scanner class to do some cool stuff like count all the words in, in Hamlet. All right, that's all for today. Have a good one.